and they make it into soup or they eat the muscle on the back. They don't eat the face, no. typically not. Why? It's all cartilage, there's nothing yummy there, right? Like it's all. Because I know people, you know those people that live in the savanna, they like they cut the head off and boil it. <laughs> not really, no. I can see the brain. See that yellow stuff in here? Mm -hmm. That's the brain. <coughs> yeah, I'm sick. And then this is where the eyes are. No, that's okay. <laughs> hey, come on in. We haven't quite started yet. I took off the head part, but. Um, feel free to grab stools. You don't have to stand. You got stools, you're good. I'm going to make its head flat. I'll just keep that there. <laughs> I don't know. You'll have to ask Dr. Betts. A GoPro from a student's perspective. Yeah. We already got one. I think he just wants as many angles as he possibly can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, go get like the paper towel bot roll. Oh, is he going live? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're not in that. The the camera's right here. Yeah. You can see you can see what's on on live. I'm ready. You are going to go live. Are you going to step in here and actually say something? Yeah, I can. Oh boy. Okay. Are we on? We're on. We're, we're on. on. I have no idea that anyone's watching, but we're on. I, my, my grandmother might be. Hey guys, Dr. Betts here, all in with Dr. Betts on my YouTube channel. I am here with the Broward College North Campus Science Club and Amber Abel's. You may remember her from the podcast. She's that crazy lady who swam with freaking sharks. All <laughs> no, right? no laser beams. Now though. she's going to tear one apart for you doing a little pig dissection. So you might want to stay tuned. It's going to get, uh, well, shall we say medieval and really gross. So stay tuned. We're going to focus it on the camera. Amber's going to take you through it. It's actually a learning experience, but really gross at the same time. Take chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to him. Take biology. Um, and I, I would have gone with it's going to get fishy. And by the way, it says pig. <laughs> Yeah, it's not a pig. It's not a pig. It's not a pig. This I'm is gonna be the pig guy. Yeah, we've got Dr. Sadiq here doing a pig First also. Time in our college history, got dual freaking dissections going on. Dual dissections. This is great. All right, so while we were waiting, we t are you uh yeah. I'm getting it organized. We took off the skin on the head. So we'll just do this before we take her apart. And you can see sharks are made of cartilage. So all of their skeleton, thanks, she's hitting me with her tail. All of the skeleton's made of cartilage. So this is her skull. And in, fish, in, in sharks, this is called the chondrocranium. Do you know what the prefix chondro means? Cartilage. Cartilage. Oh. Yeah. So it literally means cranium made of cartilage. And so it's really hard. Like, it's, it's pretty, pretty tough on there. Um, and then there's all this jelly stuff in here. Get my pointer, right? So all of this, it's, it's jelly. You guys touched this. And that's part of their sensory organs. So we have five senses. Sharks have six. They can also sense vibration and feel movement. So there's all these pores on the head. So when I press on there, you can see the jelly coming through the pores. So the water brings the vibrations into the pores, into the skull, and that vibrates the jelly. And they can feel where the fish are. They have some on the, their nose and then on the bottom of the mouth here as well. So there's some more pores. And those are called the ampullae of Lorenzini. All right, so we got a big lady shark, and she's hopefully a big mama shark. We might find some, some baby sharks in here. Is there a way to quickly identify? Yeah, so how would you tell? So over here, she's got, let's do an external anatomy. So they have lots of fins. This is the, the head, right? So that's the anterior region, and this is the tail. And she doesn't really fit on this tray. And we've got the trunk of the body here. 
Um, so this is the pectoral fin. And then she's got a pelvic fin and then a tail fin. On the top, she has another one called the dorsal fin, and they have two fins, first dorsal fin and a second dorsal fin. So to tell male and female, all you have to do is look at this pelvic fin. And so the females don't have any extra structures here. The males have two elongated intromittent organs. And so they're intromittent organs for copulation called claspers. And so if this was a male, you would see two long claspers here, and they're modified portions of this pelvic fin. Right. And then we have this opening here called the cloaca. Um, do you know what the word cloaca means? Rectum? Sewer. Oh, oh sewer. Sewer. Yeah. Uh, it means sewer. Um, because sharks don't have a separate uh, exit point for defecating or urinating or reproductive. Um, everything comes out the same hole. That's called the cloaca. Yeah. And so up here we've got the gills. How many gills do you see? Three. Five. There's one, two, three, four, five. So the sharks don't have extra covers over their gills. They have gill slits and then the gill tissue is right in here. And we'll open her up and you can see all that. Um, bony fish, so bone, fish that have bone instead of cartilage, they have an operculum. And that operculum is a bony covering part of the skull that covers up this gill tissue, and they only have one opening. But the sharks don't have that bony covering here, so their gill tissue is kind of exposed. All right. Scissors. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut her up the middle here. I'm right hand so I'm going to turn her. Um, yeah, you want to hold her head there? That's fine. Um, so I'm just going to start right there here at the cloaca. Uh, shark skin's really tough. It's, it's kind of like sandpaper. And so getting through the shark skin with a scalpel takes a really long time. So we're just going to use some scissors. I'm not getting through because she's real big. All right, here we go. That's the cavity. I think I cut the uh, stomach of or the intestine up a little bit. What do you call the cavity? This is called the coelom. Oh. oh yeah, she's got some babies in there. Pregnant shark. Yeah. Wow. On Broward College Road campus, all in with Dr. Ben. Switch to Baby Shark. <laughs> right, everybody. Yeah. Baby Shark has actually. Oh, yeah. Skin will be dumped out the left hand tree. There you go. The skin's very thick. The skin's not actually that thick, so look here, you can see the layers. Um, the layers. Okay. And they don't actually have a lot of thickness there. So here's. Yeah, it's it's the this is the the peritoneum, right? This is the lining of the the gut body cavity, and then this is the muscle, and then this is the epidermis, wow. and it's just if you feel it, it's very rough. Um, if you feel it head to tail, it's very smooth, mm -hmm. but feel it the other way, tail to head. You can hear it on my glove scraping. Yeah. They have scales that are shaped like little hooks. Um, called placodont scales, and they're, they um, motion through the water. We, we think that they help decrease uh, friction and as they swim, kind of like the pits on a golf ball, right? That actually helps decrease air friction. All right, so let's keep going. Yeah, it sounds, it's really rough. We'll go all the way up to the falciform ligament. Okay. So, let's also... Nah, the tail's fine. That's cartilage, this is the pelvic girdle. So this is where the fin's coming in and attaching. Wow. 
I'm just making this a little easier to hold open here, and then I'll do the same thing up here. Lambert, how did you learn all this stuff? I spent a long time fishing and, and dissecting sharks, yeah. So my undergraduate was in marine biology, and I got to do a bunch of research with the FSU uh, Marine and Coastal Lab, and I worked with Dr. Dean Grubbs, who is now working on sawfish, but he did a lot of stuff with sharks. Look at the stool, there we go. All right, so, you ready? I mean, it gets worse. Yeah, <laughs> oh, she's got some gunk in here. Looks like, uh, yeah, all right, so, what do you think this is? Do the sharks have lungs? Okay, let's let's address that. Um, so so sharks have gills, right? And we'll open we'll open her up here earlier or later. But um, the gills are a countercurrent system, and they bring her circulatory system in contact with the water, and so she gets oxygen from the water. <coughs> And so they don't actually breathe air. Um, they just get their oxygen via os a diffusion from, from the water. So this is actually the liver. They have, liver? yeah, this is the liver. Sharks are really, really known for having a really big, liver. oily, fatty liver. Um, and this may not look that big, but for her body size, right, this is sure. a big liver. Um, and they have two lobes. There's a left lobe and a right lobe, or I guess left for her and, and her right. Um, there's a little piece of ligament up here. Connects the ligger, liver to the, the ventral body cavity. It's called the falciform ligament. Just as humans. Yep. Um, one thing that's really cool when you dissect a lot of organisms between different phylums, right? Like so sharks, you do pigs. Um, I've done salamanders and cats, is you see a lot of anatomy that's conserved. And so it's got the same name, it's the same structure developmentally in humans as sharks. Um, they have this little muscle right above the gills here that is the same muscle as your trapezius, developmentally. All right, so we've got the liver. We might have to cut that out later because it gets in the way. All right, all right, what's this? Nope, the heart is actually way up here. So we'll have to open her up, up further to see the heart. Digestive. Yeah, digestive, good. Yeah, they have a really small heart. So this is the digestive. So this is um, the stomach. Yeah. Not everybody's twisted up in here. It's actually the... No. A lot of the shark flesh... Fish that we when you yeah, eat a fish, right? yeah, you eat these muscles oh. on the side. Not on this one. No, not on this. The shark meat, you would eat tail meat, like back here uh, or up here. Shark fin. And then shark fins, when they eat shark fin soup, uh, they cut off. The, a, lot, a lot of time, they just cut off the fin and, and leave the shark oh. to die in the water. Oh, that's bad. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. And bad. They, they boil these down, and they get the cartilaginous fin rays, mm. and they put them in the soup. So they're not actually even not necessarily eating them, they're just they putting them grow in. They don't so they wouldn't be able to swim. Yeah. They would just sink. Yes. That's and they, and sharks have to keep swimming mm -hmm. in order to keep breathing because they have to continuously have water flowing over their gills. They don't have the ability, to, some of them can pump water, but they mostly have to keep swimming. And so if you cut off a shark's fins and it can't swim, you killed it. But they let it drown. It's horrible. Um, so sharks have to keep buoyant too. You think about swimming in the water, what, you guys have air in your lungs. So when you jump in the water, if you have air in your lungs, you don't sink. Um, sharks have to keep themselves buoyant in order to not sink as well. Um, and they do that with the liver. The liver is very, very fatty and it produces oils and the oils help their buoyancy. And so they can modulate, right? Because they can't bring in air or anything into a lung. Um, other fish, bony fish, have some of them have true lungs, and then some of them have gas bladders. And that's how other fish regulate buoyancy, but sharks don't have that. They don't have an air sac, so they use their, their liver. This is actually the end of the esophagus. And then this 
is stomach. And I think if we open that, it's going to be really, really nasty. You want to do it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it looks like it's very digested. So. Those are the uterus. Yeah. yeah. It's like a horn? Is it a uterine horn? Yeah, they have two uteri. No. Yeah, you can take pictures. Um, it's more like worms where they have two uteri. No. Oh, it's two separate There's two super uteri. Okay. All right, so here's the stomach. Here's... This is the spleen. The pancreas is over here, but it looks destroyed. Um, pancreas should be here, but it's totally gone. Yeah, so this is the esophagus. This is the stomach. And then this is the intestine. And the intestine is really, really short. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they have an, an adaptation on the inside here. And I'll cut this open. Okay. Russell edit that out later. Russell's gonna kill you. Yeah. You're touching over there? If you touch the shark, you can't touch the camera again. It's okay. Don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, Russ, she didn't touch the shark. Okay. So in I'll here. Change the gloves and come back. Yeah. Oh man, my scalpel's not cutting anymore because of all the shark skin I was cutting. So let's do a blade change. Will somebody assist? Are you what blade are you using? It's too small. Oh. Here, can I see the, uh, uh, Diane, hand me the, um, the red button. Yes. And then open that way. Just pop it open a little bit. And that's enough. And I will take it. We have a viewer. It's not me. Yay. How many? A hundred? No, we got two. Oh, two. Two. We're up to two. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. There we go. Is that you guys? <laughs> All right. So if you look in here, see all these folds? That's called the spiral valve. So think about your intestines. What do your intestines look like? They're, yeah, they're long and squirrely. Swir yeah, right? Um, so this is really short. The reason we have such long intestines is because as the food moves through, it's digested and reabsorbed. And so we need a lot of surface area. Well, the shark doesn't have that, right? They don't have this big surface area of intestine. They have this really short intestine. But the food has to go through all of these spirals inside of here. And so that increases the surface area. And so then the shark gets more nutrients. All right, and then down here, if we continue, the rectum. And then if you follow that, that feeds right out to the cloaca. Oh, you're fine. All right. Do you want to look at some babies? Okay. Oh, it's not liquid. This is just ick. Yeah. All right. It's going to be difficult to get in here. Okay. You see this ball up there? Come on in over here. You can see on this side. That's an ovary? Yeah. So that's where the eggs are. And it goes through a gland right here where they put egg cases on the eggs. Mm. Um, sharks have different ways of reproducing. Some of them give live birth. This one gives live birth. Um, some of them lay egg cases. If you've ever seen a mermaid's purse, 
those little black egg cases that stick on seaweed. Mm -hmm. um, those are shark egg cases. And then some of them have uh, eggs inside the uterus that hatch in the uterus and then give live birth. So they have three different ways of doing it. All right, so let's open up this uterus here. Those are for pins for just uh, the dissection. Yeah, but I've got students. What do I need pins for? Mm -hmm. So this is the uterus. Um, do you know how many uteruses humans have? Two. Humans? Two one. one. We just we make <laughs> right. We make one baby at a time. Two uteruses. They have a left uterus and a right uterus. And both of these actually have babies in them. So if we follow the right side all the way up, we should find another ovary. Oh, there's another ovary up there. That counts as two livers? It's one liver, but it has two lobes. Um, you actually have six lobes of your liver. Wait, so. All right, you ready to give birth? I don't know. So this is the baby shark. What do you think that is? That's attached. It's the yolk sac. That's the yolk sac. So this is the food then attached to the little baby here. So let's pull that out. We're giving birth over here, Dr. Betts. How many babies do you think are in, in this ovary? Oh, here's another one. So this one was further down. This was closer to the cloaca which means this one was further along. Look, there's not as much in the yolk sac, mm. right? It's eaten a lot of its food sources. And there's more. And this one was further up, which means that it was less well-developed. So look, it's got its yolk sac still attached. Um, so when baby sharks are born, they do have a little umbilical spot, and that goes away after about a year. And so that uterus had three baby sharks. So here's the inside of the uterus. Would this look different if they were alive? Yes. Less nasty than that? Yeah. The gunk in here is from being preserved. Uh, yeah. This one I can feel sharks as well. What? I said we had five babies. Five <laughs> babies total? I think there's six. All right. Here's another one. <laughs> Oop, this one's all the way down in the birth canal. That one was ready to come out. Do they all come out like at the same point or do they Typically, yeah. No, no, no. There are six. Little baby sharkies. <laughs> all right, so there's all of the uterus. All right, now look all the way back here. Let's get some of that grime out of there. There's a structure back here. I need the uh, those forceps. This one I asked for suction. All right, so you see under here, there's a tissue layer. So this is the peritoneum, which is the layer of connective tissue that surrounds the entire body cavity. And the kidney is a structure that's called retroperitoneal, which means it's behind the body cavity. So I have to actually cut through this body wall to get back here. Um, most of the parts of the shark that you would eat would be muscle. Uh, some people might eat the liver. Sweet livers, yeah, but it's a really fatty, oily liver. So the kidney's back here. And the kidney, where's your kidney? Yeah, your lower back, right? Um, yeah, it's right back here, <laughs> much lower. The shark kidney comes all the way down here and runs all the way up here. Yeah, 
And so when you are developing, so when you're a fetus in your mom's a uterus, you actually have a kidney that goes all the way from down here all the way up to your head. And so the shark keeps more of that and we lose a lot of it. But we can see how evolutionarily we have the same structure. And just as we've changed and adapted, we have different, um, different retention of it. It's really icky in here. All right. Nah, I'm not going to worry about it. You want to see the heart? Yeah, sure. All right, you're going to have to, yeah, let's put the liver back. All right. <laughs> this part's a tough part. The tissue gets really thick up here because they have a lot of muscle here. What do you think this muscle does? Protects them? Like muscle, gills, muscle moves things. So what is it? Yeah, the jaw mm. and the gills. Have you ever seen a shark heart, Ramon? Where's the heart? Is it black? It looks kind of black. Mm. So they, how many valves do you have in your heart? Four. Or chambers, yeah, four. four. You have four chambers. The shark has two chambers. They have an atria and a ventricle, right? So this hard part right here, you can feel that? You can feel it? It's really tough. That's the ventricle. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then the atria is right above it. In frogs, yeah, they have three chambers. Yeah, they have... Um, two atria and one ventricle. Because they had to dissect a frog. Oh. So there's the atria, and then there's the ventricle. So which way does the blood go, from the atria to the ventricle, or the other way? The ventricle. The atria to the ventricle? Atria to the ventricle, yeah. So the blood comes in through here, through the atria, and then it goes to the ventricle. And then it gets pumped back out up to the conus arteriosus, which is all the way up there. And then there's a big sinus back here. You see this big pouch? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is full of blood. And so the blood just pools there. It's a vein, so it brings it up to the atria. So where do you think the blood goes next? <laughs> that's, a big, that's a big vein, yeah, look at that. It's coming all the way up here. The blood goes from the heart to the gills, and then at the gills it picks up oxygen, mm -hmm. and then the gills it sends it all the way down here and down the aorta to the rest of the body. So it's, it's a one way. It has it's one, one way, way yeah. So we have, to, we have two separate yeah. circuits, right? We have pulmonary, which goes to the lungs, and then our blood goes back to the heart, and then we pump it out to the rest of our body. But the shark doesn't have any more chambers, so they send the blood to the, lung, the, heart, the gills, mm -hmm and then to the body. And then it goes right back to the heart. They have one system. Yeah, and you can see some of the big veins and arteries right here. So this is artery, vein, and then this is the spinal cord, mm -hmm. like the, the vertebral column, and then this is nerve cord as well. So this is the, the big main artery and vein that travels all the way up. So the reason the tail's cut, when they prepare these sharks for dissection, they drain out all the blood. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to take blood from a shark, you can actually draw blood right from the tail. And same with dolphins, they have a big vein that runs up the tail. And so they cut these and they hang them and they let them bleed. And that removes all of the blood out of the shark's body so that when we dissect it, we don't have blood. Uh, it would be really messy. All right, here, let me let you guys get off of there and I'm gonna open up its jaw here. Let's see if we can do this. They do have a tongue. It's immobile. Mm. 
All right, look at all that muscle. See how thick that is? That's all muscle for moving their, their jaws around. Yeah, you really do. But it's all cartilage. Will you one of you guys go ask if they have some bigger dissecting scissors? Yeah, bigger scissors. Well, that's making it. Yeah, I can. Like, what is she doing in there that she needs more scissors? <laughs> Gotta crack the, uh, the jaw bone here. But it's not a bone. It's the jaw, but it's made of cartilage. They do have a little tiny bit of bone. And it's not the teeth. The teeth are enamel and dentin, which is different. Mm -hmm. The very, very base of the teeth, where the teeth actually sets into the, car the jaw, mm -hmm. there's a teeny tiny bit of bone. And that's it. The rest of their skeleton is all cartilage. Oh, it's got me. It bit me. <laughs> you only have a small one in there? The only large, largest ones we have are these. Yeah, that's what I've got. Um, this is what you already have? Yeah. Okay. Maybe it's dull. Is it dull? I just changed it. Oh, the, uh, the scissors? Yeah. yeah, they might be. Yeah. It's right over here. The sharps, they get disposed of by a company that disposes of biohazard. Okay, so you can see in the mouth here. Here's the bottom jaw. And that's got his little sharp teeth. Do you see all the rows of teeth? Mm -hmm. They go from the front, the ones that it's using. And there's lots of teeth back here. Look at all that. Those are teeth that are starting to form. And so sharks lose hundreds of teeth in their lifetime. And then as the tooth wears out, as it gets loose, it just falls out the front, and a new teeth comes right up from behind it to replace it. And that's on the top and the bottom. You can see lots of teeth. So they typically only have one or two rows of functional teeth, but they have, well, there's probably like seven rows back here of teeth that are growing in. Here's the tongue, right there. Fish aren't like us. They, they can't stick out their tongue. Their tongue's stuck <laughs> to the bottom of their mouth. And then here's the roof of the mouth. All of the blood that goes up to the brain is traveling up under here, up to the brain. And then here you can see the gills. You see these bumps here, right there? Those are called gill rakers. And they're pretty hard. Those are used for filtering stuff. So if they get dirt or debris or like plankton or anything in their gills, you know, we can turn it for the, the camera there. Those are the gill rakers. And those help filter out stuff so that that doesn't get caught in the gills. Right, it would be really bad for the shark if there was, think about pool filters and stuff. As they filter stuff, stuff builds up on them. If we couldn't get rid of stuff, right, if they didn't have a way to clean it off, then they wouldn't be able to con get oxygen out of the water. And so the blood from the heart goes to the gills, and then the gill blood goes to the rest of the body.
to the heart. Yeah, so that's our anatomy. Did you guys, yeah. you want to pick up a baby shark? What happens if you cut that egg? The yolk? We can open one. It's a, it's kind of a solid mass. It just looks like this solid white mass of kind of looks like a cooked egg yolk, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> it's the same function. It's a food storage. So as the baby moves through the uterus, they eat this, and then when they're born, they look more like this one, who has eaten through most of their yolk. They do have their eyes, yeah. Feel all their fins, though, these baby fins. Yeah, like feel those all. They're floppy, right? And then feel this guy. They're not floppy. So what happens when they're born, the fins are really floppy so that they can make it through the cloaca, the birth canal. And then when they get out, the fins stiffen. They absorb water or um, particles from the water, nutrients, and then they stiffen the fins within a couple of hours so that they can swim. Um, so think about a stingray, right? A flat pancake looking thing. How do you birth that? Well, they wrap it up like a burrito and then you birth it. And then it flattens out its fins and they get stiffer. They're very, very floppy when they're first born. Yeah. So that's the shark. <laughs> The liver. I don't want to do that because we're going to use the shark again on Wednesday. And I want all of the stuff to still be in here. So I'm actually going to put the baby sharks back in. Um, yeah, just well, just back inside of her. Um, so they can discover and pull them out on their own. But if you guys want to touch anything or dig in here, feel free. Yeah, feel the, make sure you feel the skin backward. Why is the shark light on the bottom, but dark on the top? <laughs> um, they are actually this coloration when they're born. Right? Dark on the top. He doesn't have any sun exposure either. Um, it's camouflage. So think about looking down on the dark water from above as a fish. It blends in with the bottom. But if you're on the bottom looking up, it blends in with the light. So they're harder to see from the top and the bottom because of the coloration. Can you open this piece again? Yeah. What did you say that was? The gill raker. You can touch it. Oh, it feels weird. Yeah, it's very hard and knobby. Um, and that just keeps stuff out of the gills so that things that they eat don't get in the gills so that anything they swim across doesn't get stuck in there. You see all the like filaments in the gills? See all those little lines? I could like went all the way around. I could have just gone a completely different way. <laughs> this is all for surface area. So this is all full of blood. Go ahead. And the blood comes in contact with the water and that changes oxygen and carbon dioxide, just like our lungs. So the bottom of a, an umbrella mushroom, you know what they call those? Gills. Oh. They call those gills. And those are reproductive organs. Those are for dispersing spores. But it's the same function, the same significance, surface area. Right? You want lots of surface area if you're a fungus to make spores. And when you're a shark, you want lots of surface area for breathing, for oxygen exchange. <laughs> All right, so let's pack her back up. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put these back in here. There were, now we're going to do the, the uh, North, North Campus Bio, uh, or Science Club rendition of Baby Shark. <laughs> what do you call it when you put it in the 
put the shark back together after dissecting it? Um, reconstruction? I don't know. But she'll stay better like that if we do that for a couple of days because we're going to use her again on Wednesday. Yeah. So now I'm very slimy. All right, Science Club, come here. We're poking. Oh, they're washing their hands. They're done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get in there. What are we doing? <laughs> just saying goodbye. Professor uh, Abel. Uh, and just say. Uh, oh, wait. I'm oh, not seeing it. Say. Uh, you're in there. Yeah. Hold yeah. on. Don't move. There we go. Say. <laughs> we're the Science Club from North Campus, and we're all in with Dr. Betts. That was a lot. We're the Science, Science, Science Club, Club from North, North Campus, Campus, and we're all, all in, in with Dr. Dr. Betts. And Professor Abel is awesome. Yay. 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 Oh. Thank you very much. All right. Bye. <laughs> All right, time to wash these beautiful hands. Yeah, I'm taking these gloves off. That was fun. First live stream from Roll Call.